The Hudson Museum received a University of Maine Arts Initiative C grant to support a collaboration with the Advanced Structures and Composite Center and Intermedia Programs to replicate a culturally sensitive object in our collection. This object, a Clinket Frog Clan Helmet, HM5040, is among seven items requested for repatriation by the Central Council of Clinket and the Haida Indian Tribes of Alaska. Helmets or hats are the most important objects of cultural patrimony for the Clinket people. Between 1880 and 1930, collectors and museums descended upon Native communities around the world to document their cultural traditions and to collect material culture. This is an image of a traditional Northwest Coast house featuring a display of clan-owned regalia worn and danced by clan leaders on important ceremonial occasions such as the death of clan leaders and potlatches. The wearing of clan hats must be reciprocated at these events. In the late 19th and 20th century, efforts to eradicate indigenous languages, traditions, and ceremonial and religious practices undermined cultural systems and allowed clan-owned objects to remove from their community. Some were sold from shops in Alaska to visitors to the region, such as Martin's Old Curiosity Shop in Juneau, Walter C. Waters' Bear Totem Shop in Wrangell, and the Gold Nugget Shop in Juneau, which was owned by Bell and Robert Simpson. The Hudson Museum has Northwest Coast holdings from the Simpson and Waters shops. The Frog Clan Helmet was part of a 1982 bequest to the University of Maine from the estate of William P. Palmer III, which included an extraordinary gift of pre-Columbian objects ranging from Olmec to Aztec, and an assemblage of 160 Northwest Coast masks, potlatch bowls, Chilcot textiles, and tourist items. The Northwest Coast collection includes deaccession museum holdings, and objects acquired from Native American art dealers, such as the Simpson and Waters. Collection documentation indicates that Palmer acquired the frog helmet from Proctor Stafford, a California collector. In 1985, the LA County Museum of Art featured object from Proctor Stafford's collection, including the Clinket frog helmet and symbols of prestige, Native American arts of the Northwest Coast from Los Angeles collections. This exhibit also included other works that found their way to the Hudson, including the mask that was the inspiration for the Seattle Seahawks logo. Indigenous communities around the world are working collaboratively with museums to exercise greater control over collections that represent their cultures. In the United States, the 1990 passage of the Native American Graves Protection and Repatriation Act, NAGPRA, altered the relationship between Native American nations and communities, archaeologists, scholars, and collecting institutions. This act requires federal agencies and institutions receiving federal funds, like Humane, to return cultural heritage, human remains, associated and unassociated funerary objects, and objects of cultural patrimony to federally recognized Native American tribes and Native Alaskan and Hawaiian villages and organizations. The Hudson Museum has among its holdings objects that are subject to NAGPRA and has consulted with Native American tribes and communities in Maine and beyond, repatriating human remains and associated and unassociated funerary objects through processes set up and administered by the National Park Service. As part of this process, museums and Native American tribes consult. Museums provide access to holdings and available catalog information. The communities provide indigenous knowledge about these objects, sometimes historic images and documents, and clan histories recounting the passing of these objects from clan member to clan member. In June 2018, a delegation led by Harold Jacobs, cultural resource specialist, visited the Hudson Museum. In February 2020, the museum received a formal claim notification, which included the Clinket Frog Clan Helmet. Repatriation returns the object to the appropriate claimant community, but at the same time, it removes the piece from the public realm. The Hudson received permission from Harold Jacobs to replicate the helmet, and we are aware of a number of replication projects at the Smithsonian Institution. Through this grant, the museum replicated the Clinket Frog Clan helmet in preparation for repatriation 
by creating a 3D replica, engaging an artist to finish the surfaces of the replica, and another to paint and do surface treatments that match the original. This allows the museum to retain the replica for exhibition and educational purposes, as well as develop a proof of concept for future collection replication projects. Alex Cole, research engineer at the Advanced Structures and Composites Center, used a ferro laser line 3D scanner to capture hundreds of millions of data points off the helmet without physically touching it. This unit is typically used by the center to extract data on complex surfaces, such as unique molded parts that cannot be physically measured. Alex scanned the area multiple times to ensure that the best quality scanned data was available. The interface on the screen allowed him to see the quality of the scan in real time and rescan areas as needed. The scanning process for the entire helmet, included the underside of the piece, took approximately three hours. After the scan was completed, he took the scan data and created a post-process high-quality mesh model which could then be printed. Jonathan Roy, research engineer at the Advanced Structures and Composite Center, coordinated the 3D printing of the replica, which was printed on a Fortis F900MC. The unit has a print chamber which can print up to 3 feet by 3 feet by 2 feet high. The printer has unrivaled accuracy in the fused deposition modeling industry and is designed for manufacturing end use parts with aerospace industry quality. The replica could have been reproduced from a wood blank using computer numerical control technology, a more expensive and time intensive process. By using a 3D printing process, the results were lighter, more durable, required less time, effort, cost, and skill level than a traditional machining process. The printer prints the object in an oven, which allows it to control the rate at which the print layers cool and reduces internal stresses on the print. ASA was selected for the print material. It's a variant of ABS, which has a higher resistance to moisture, UV light levels, and is less likely to warp as well as possessing good mechanical properties that make it easier to sculpt in the post-production process. Due to the shape of the object, the helmet was printed with a soluble, dissolvable support material. The project allowed the center to understand the key skill sets needed in the replication of ethnographic objects and highlighted the artistic elements in engineering design. While there was an initial fascination with the white thermoplastic replica of the Frog Clan helmet, the next step in the process was to make the replica resemble the original piece. Reed Hayden, a UMaine interdisciplinary PhD student with an MFA in Intermedia, is a woodcarver and boat builder who's taught at the Wooden Boat School and the Center for Furniture Craftsmanship. Using his skills as a woodworker, he finished the replica and prepared it for painting smoothing the surface and infilling as necessary. This work was done at Reed's studio in Surrey. He used Bondo as an infilling medium. As the replica was printed in layers, there were angular ridges that needed to be smooth without losing wood grain textures and ethnographic wear patterns and repairs. Bondo is a readily available filler that cures quickly, can be shaped, does not shrink, and is permanently durable. There are a variety of Bondo fillers for specific applications, and this particular version interacted with the AASA with a surface efflorescence, an unexpected outcome, but one that was quickly resolved. Once Reed's work was done and concerns about off-gassing of materials had been resolved, Anna Martin began her work. Anna is an interdisciplinary PhD student with an MFA in Intermedia. She selected a variety of artist quality acrylic paints and began to prime the surface of the replica. Once the surface was primed, she began to apply the artist's paints, but quickly found that the sheen did not match the dull matte surfaces of the original. To match these surfaces, she turned to craft paints commonly found in hobby and arts and craft shops. Throughout the process, she worked with the replica and the frog helmet side by side, meticulously recording wood graining, wear patterns, and surface losses. 
She used iridescent paints to replicate the abalone shell inlays rather than purchasing abalone shell and grinding it into shape to inlay. Of all the aspects of the project, this was the most time intensive work. Anna showed meticulous attention to detail and the resulting replica is nearly indistinguishable from the original work. All aspects of the project were visually documented, including a time-lapse segment of the object scanning and 3D printing, and still photography of the process of making the replica look like the original. Luke McKinney, an Intermedia MFA student, did the time-lapse sequences. Dwayne Schimmel, an Intermedia MFA graduate, did the still photography and integrated the time-lapse segments with still images. Here is his project photographic montage. We hope that you will visit the exhibit on this project, which is featured in the Minsky Culture Lab of the Hudson Museum on the second level of the Collins Center for the Arts.